When your users come to log in, they can use standard username and password, but we can also integrate with other SSO or single sign-on providers. Let's look at how to do that with Google and with Microsoft Azure. Starting with Google, I'll head over to the console.cloud.google.com. And if you don't have an account, you'll need to sign up for one here. We'll then click on credentials. And if you can't find those, you can search for them up here. We're just looking for credentials, this API and services. And we want to create a new OAuth2 client ID. So we'll create credentials, OAuth client ID, application type doesn't matter hugely, but we'll say web. So BuddyBase University. We'll need to set a redirect URI. This is telling Google where you're allowing it to send after it's finished the OAuth handshake. For me, that's going to be at localhost 10,000 forward slash API forward slash global auth callback. Create that. Now that's going to give me my client ID and my client secret. I'm showing these to you on the video. Um, I'm going to delete this client credential once I finish this video, but these should be kept secret. So I'll copy my client ID. I'm going to auth inside my BuddyBliss application and I'm pasting that client ID in there. I also need a client secret. So I'm going to copy that. Now I'll get back over again and paste it in here. You can see that the redirect URI is here. Um, Localhost 10,000 API global auth Google callback. Obviously, after you've deployed, you might need to add more redirect URIs. So to do that, we go to the key, press the edit, and add as many URIs as you like. I'm going to activate and save. So now when a new user arrives, they'll be faced with the sign in with Google button. Now for your users to be able to use the sign in with Google button, their email needs to already exist within your system. And there are two ways to be able to do that. So back in our users table, We'll add user and we'll add the email that's associated with that sign in account. We can decide whether or not they're an app user, a developer, or admin. Now, if we select send email invites, that user needs to go through and accept the email before they can log in. If we generate the passwords for each user, we can add them immediately to our table and ignore that password if they're going to use the single sign on. Now, our users can head over here, sign in with Google. So if, like me, you have mistyped the redirect URI, um, you'll get this error, redirect URI mismatch. So I'm going to check what it was and copy this URL. I'm going to head back to my Google configuration and load up that BuddyBase University. And I'll just paste this new one in and save. Let's try again. Sign in with Google. Brilliant. It's let me get past. That means it's accepted my redirect URI. It knows where it's going back again. And I'll enter my password. That's for my two auth. Again, so we've got a slightly more secure solution because we're using 2FA and we're back. We've landed here. Don't have access to any applications yet. Um, that can be changed quite quickly. I go to my buddy base, click on manage, go to access and assign that new email here as a basic access to this application. Refresh this page and now they've got access to our buddy base university application. So when it comes to Microsoft Azure, it's a very similar process. We're going to, need to sign up for a key, we're going to set up an application, and we're going to need to get the right data. So I'm going to go to the Azure Active Directory. I'm going to add an app registration that's going to be for BuddyBase University. Um, I'm going to do single tenant only, redirect URI. Um, so for this redirect URI, this should be um, HTTP, localhost, 10,000 slash API slash global slash OIDC slash callback. And this is going to be on the web. I'll register that. So I need to add some credentials. So I go to clients and secrets and create a new client secret. We'll just call this buddy base. Um, this expires after six months. So every six months you'll need to come and refresh the key um, if you're using this extensively. And this value we want to copy. Now, as soon as we leave this page or refresh it, that value is going to be masked. And if you want to get it again, you can't. You'll have to delete the secret or create a new and create a new one or create a new one alongside it. So I've got my secret. Let's head back to my auth. I'm going to paste my secret into here. So I've got my secret. I also need my config URL and my client ID. Let's get those. So back into our overview. Our Application ID, that's our client ID. 
So we can copy that value. And our configuration URL, well, that's found by clicking on this endpoints. And we want the open ID connect metadata document to IDC metadata document. Copy that and paste it and we'll save. Now we, I want this to be for Microsoft and I can choose the Microsoft icon equally and I don't want to activate it. And I'll save that. If you're using another OAuth provider, um, we've got logos ready for Okta, for one login, for Alt Zero, and just the, the generic OIDC login, or you can update your own logo. Now, when a new user arrives at our login page, they've got the option to sign in with Google, to sign in with Microsoft, or to sign in with email. I can sign in with Microsoft, use my email address for that, need my password. On the first login, um, they'll want to say, hey, this application is not published. Um, do you want to consent? And again, I've made an error with the um, redirect URI. So I'll copy this, head back over to my um, Microsoft Azure, head to my authentication, and I will paste this URL into um, the right spot. I'll save it. Unauthorized means I've probably got something wrong with my secret again. So if I head back, here, it means that either my client ID or my client secret is incorrect. So let's get our client ID, let's double check that that's right. Application client ID. That's good. And our application secret. Now, because we can't see it again, we're just going to have to create a new one. So we'll do buddy base U number two. Add that. And we'll cop. So we'll log in with Microsoft. We'll add our sign in with our email address, add our password, and then click sign in. That's going to redirect our application. And I'm able to see what I'm allowed to see. And again, the only reason I can do that is back in my users table, that email address already exists. You can use any of the single sign in providers that use OIDC, the open ID, but the email address that's associated with that account needs to already exist in your users table before they can use.